Did you know that Victoria's Inner Harbor used to be home to the tallest totem pole in the world? It was raised for the Commonwealth Games, and from day one, it was polarizing. It had thick wires that didn't look right and had beacon lights on top that didn't always work. Check's Philip Campbell had the story. Even the natives who carved the totem don't particularly like the thick guy wires, but without some support, high winds could topple the 55-meter pole. Come on, right now. The unsightly guy wires are just one of the complaints representatives of the Ocean Point Resort and First Nations people are dealing with as they meet with Victoria Mayor Bob Cross. Some tourists and residents say the totem is too thin, should have been painted on the back side, the huge black collars are unsightly, and the light on the top is tacky. The natives who poured their lives into it have been offended by the criticism. But now it looks as though some of the negatives will be turned to positives. We could literally yard the parliament buildings across the bay with it. <laughs> so, you know, if we just wanted to stand up, we need help from the professional community to come forward and say, hey, I know of a wire that's so tiny you can hardly see it. The big steel jackets can be trimmed down. You know, we've agreed as carvers that we can paint the backside. We can paint the, the collars. So, and it was unanimous at the meeting that the red light goes. So I'm going to personally crawl up and hack it off. <laughs> Did the city know that this height would require guy wires and think that through? Looking back in the minutes and the records, it, we requested information. Uh, the best of my knowledge, we didn't get all the answers at the time. The controversy may not be over yet. All this must still be approved by engineers who are not eager to sign their careers away by making changes that could make the pole a land and air hazard. Philip Campbell, Chaksik News, Songhees Point. Well, Philip was never one to let a story go, and for years he continued to report on the pole that from day one was a headache for the city of Victoria. Eventually, uh, it turned into a migraine because the aircraft beacon, uh, beacon lights at the top of the pole, they died, and no one, including Mayor Cross, knew how to change the bulbs. And when Transport Canada told the city it had to fix the lights, well, that's when Philip Campbell had an idea. It's going to be the fault of my life. Oh, here's your ball back. It's your turn. I can't do that. I'm going to try it. I made it. What a view from up here. Better get this chain before I fall. It was just loose. I can't believe it. Mayor Cross, you owe me one. Oh! Isn't that one of the greatest things you've ever seen? For comparison, at 55 meters, the pole was 26 meters taller than Beacon Hill Park's totem pole, which is the world's tallest freestanding totem. Uh, it didn't last long, though. In August of 1997, the pole was partially dismantled. Then in 2001, the pole was trimmed down again to its uh, current 12-meter height, which meant the oversized cables that no one seemed to like could be removed.